You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Today I'm speaking to Tamila Azadaleva from Uzbekistan and also Cantor Joseph Ness from Beth El Temple. And we're talking about the final concert for the Beth El Music Series. Of 2016-2017. Of 2016-2017. Thank you so much for reminding me. So Cantor Ness, why don't we introduce your guest? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Tamila is a wonderful, fabulous mu uh, musician, pianist, uh, who I've had the honor and pleasure of working with, I, I don't remember how many years ago, but not that long. <laughs> but it seems like it's probably about 12, 13, 14 years ago. I was looking for a pianist to play uh, f f on a Passover cantata. And another colleague of mine, Alex Nakamovsky, the wonderful jazz pianist, recommended this. I think you were a student then, I, yes, uh, I was. Uh, Tamila. And, and right away, I, <laughs> I remember conducting. You I'm fell saying, in love. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, she, she, she really she, right. she can do it. <laughs> you know. So how do? So you're from Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. So how does that happen? How did you get from Uzbekistan to congregation to Bethel <laughs> Temple in West Hartford? How did that happen? It took a long time. Well, first I had to get in touch with a professor who was on faculty at the Hart School. Her name was Oksana Yablonska, and she was from Moscow. So I got in touch with her, and she invited me to study with her here. So she brought me to the Hart School. So that was already from Uzbekistan straight to Connecticut. So in Uzbekistan, that's where you studied music yes. originally? I finished my, I finished the conservatory there. I got my undergraduate degree in piano performance there. And now? Uh, now I, and is this your home now, or are we going yes, back? Yes. This is, is your home? Yes, I live in West Hartford now. Oh, very nice. Well, yes. welcome. Thank welcome. you. So we're talking about the concert. You're going to be, be performing a few works. There are two different separate, the Beethoven is the Beethoven Symphony Number no. 7. And the Mozart is the Mozart Piano Concerto Number no. 20 in D minor. Mozart wrote this concerto when he was, I think, around 29 years old, uh, and I think it was premiered in 1785, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, and this was a 10-year period where he wrote, I think, he wrote a total of, I believe, 27 piano concertos. And this 10-year period, he wrote about 20 of them, or something like that. I, so the it was guy a prolific was, time. Well, every time for, for him for, was prolific, for, but for this time he was prolific on the piano concertos. And what's spectacular for me about these concertos is that if you listen to the piano and, and its very soulful deliverance of what it, what it has to say, it, it sounds like an aria from one of his operas. I mean, there's such a it's connection. It's just beautiful. It is beautiful. Oh, it's, so it's, the other part of this concert is that you have music from cantor Label a Glance. Right. And you also have uh, cantor Lauren Phillips, um, a soprano, performing from Congregation Beth Israel. Right. How do all these things fit together? Well, you know, uh, many concerts that, that organizations do have a label on them, you know, and, and I, I think the label I'd like to put on this one is for the love of music. <laughs> You know, um, are these well known? Uh, uh, the Beethoven music and the Mozart music is it well known? I would say those two pieces, in, in variable degrees, are are pinnacles in Western um, 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 orchestral music. And people know that. Oh yeah, I mean, the, right. I mean, the, the Beethoven Seventh. Uh, if I can give just a little history on it, was uh, premiered when Beethoven. He wrote it when he was around forty-one years old. He was already pretty deaf at the time. And uh, he conducted the premiere with, with a, a lot of composers playing in the orchestra. As a matter of fact, there was one famous guitarist who played cello in the orchestra. It was a mishmash. Uh, do you know if you've listened to the movie Amadeus? The, yes. The, uh, there was a composer by the name of Salieri, uh, who was supposedly, and I think incorrectly, Mozart's nemesis or something. But Salieri played in the orchestra during the premiere of the Beethoven Seventh Symphony. 
So and this is music that that is well known oh, by incredibly. music aficionados. Th this is for me. It's more than music. It's it's you know when I hear that opening chord of the Beethoven seventh that that opening A major chord and the, the oboe on top starting the ba -da -de -da, I'm, I'm transfixed. You're in, ha it's you're in more heaven. Than, it's, <laughs> I, I, there must be something, a, a word higher than music to describe that, that piece. It's, it's like a mountain. Now what about Tamila? So you are going to be the pianist in all these... Um, For in, the Mozart concerto. In the Mozart concerto. concerto. Yeah. And what about the music of uh, Cantor Labella Glantz? Glantz. What's yeah. that all about? Well, he, he was born, I believe, like 1898, 99, something in that area, and passed away in 1964. And there was a period in, in synagogal music where it was called the golden age of cantors. And that's when a lot of these cantors in, the, in their f first 20 years of the 20th century, 30 years, were uh, escaped Europe for, for the obvious reasons because of anti-Semitism, whatever, and they came here. He was one of those people who, who came here during that time. Uh, he was not the first generation necessarily, but maybe the second generation, and it's called the golden age of, in, in Hebrew, Chazanut, the golden age of, of cantors. And uh, they expressed themselves with, with great emotion, let's put it that way, and almost to the extent where uh, people would, if they listened to their singing now, would feel uncomfortable with it because, because there's, it's so well, there's crying, there's, 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 a, there's really powerful stuff that so they what's feel. The, what's the connection between the Mozart, the Beethoven, and the ca Cantor label a, label a glance? How do you connect those, those well, things? Uh, well, uh, you know, I would say the connection is that I firmly believe in music tradition. I always look to better myself uh, in, within that tradition, but there are various music traditions that I personally am involved with. I am the cantor of Bethel Temple, so I also want to bring the Jewish traditions into that rather large uh, panoply of, 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 of what the music that I do. So uh, Label Glantz is one of the great cantors in that I would genre. At that genre, and the genre actually is kind of a Russian Eastern Europe tradition. So how is it connecting to Beethoven and to Mozart? Like why, how, how did you, uh, usually you have a theme on all your concerts. You had uh, uh, Giacomo Gates, the, the jazz concert before that. You right. had Shei Lun and the Chinese, the East meets West. But how are you connecting glands to Beethoven and Mozart? Okay, uh, well, I, I'm gonna give a quick answer. And that is that Beethoven and Mozart are the pinnacles of Western classical music, and, and specifically orchestral in this case, because there's an orchestra playing. And what I was asked to do by the son of Label Glantz <laughs> was to take Label uh, Glantz's cantorial music and transmogrify it into a classical realm. So what I've done with his music, he'd never done anything with orchestra Glantz. I've taken his recitatives and and stretched and pulled and, 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 and created oboe solos. and the, So it, it now is also just So the connection for is the music. Oh, yeah, absolutely. As it's I said, music. it's That's all about music. It's all about music. Right. Now, what about Tamila? How are you with all this? Is this something that you usually play? Is this something, because I was listening to one of your concerts at Chopin, I was listening to you on the, on the internet, yeah. like everybody, <laughs> and I was hearing a lot of Chopin. Is this something that you usually play, or is this a stretch? Well, I play everything, and we had a lot of projects with Joseph. We already have done Stravinsky Concerto for Piano and Winds. We played Schumann. We did Bach D minor. We did Cesar Mozart. Frank. Cesar Frank's Symphonic Variations, and Mozart Double Concerto for two soloists and uh, orchestra. So now I'm playing solo concerto, and I was introduced to Mozart Concerto when I was little. Uh, I remember playing. Were you one of these sort of child prodigies in Uzbekistan? <laughs> I mean, is that, no. you know, I like Van Clive? I, I think she was. Uh, no, no. I, I think Mozart was prodigy. And I was just lucky to be introduced to his music. And I played his Concerto when I was little. And I remember my teacher being apologetic for giving me such a long piece. But I fell in love with the music and I wanted to do it more and more. And then I'd done other Concerto after that. Um, and D minor concerto is one of the most beautiful and most famous uh, Mozart right. piano concerto, and the music is just divine. If we talk about something higher than music, so let me ask you: You're from Uzbekistan, yes? And there's an interest in that. Playing music in Uzbekistan versus playing music in America—is <laughs> there um, a change? Is there some? Can you feel a difference? 
because you the you still have to um, play. Yes, I still but have to play. But is there a different feeling? Is no, I think the music world is very small, and it's a very special place. And no matter where you are, you still feel like you're in the music world. What about the audiences? Are the is the Bethel audience different? You know, I really love the atmosphere at Bethel. When you walk in, you just feel like people really support music, and everybody is a big fan of music, and it's just really pleasant to be there. And Joseph always puts like, amazing programs. And I have to concur. Yes. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but I concur. But the concerts stuff. at the Bethel Music Series are the highest level you can possibly get. They, they're very special. Yeah, I, no I, agree with that. I, I mean, how can you not? The concerts on June <laughs> the 11th? I, I, this concert on June 11th, I just want to say one thing about the Mozart concerto, just as a uh, personal thing, not mine. But so Mozart's father writes to Mozart's sister that he went to the concert when Mozart played the first performance. And he said, but we didn't get through the rondo because the parts weren't copied yet. <laughs> so, you know, Mozart was just. <laughs> and, and then, you know, that's how life was during those times. You know, even, matter of fact, there's, I, I forget which opera, it may have been uh, Marriage of Figaro, where he was writing the, the overture the day of the first performance. Well, there's a huge interest, <laughs> been, not um, just in the music, but in the characters that made the music. Oh, absolutely. There's just a huge, huge interest and that's why I was interested in you because you're the pianist and the, I wanted to know if the Uzbekistan gives you a different perspective on the music. Do you feel something differently? Well, maybe a different training. Uh, we ha I've studied at a specialized music school where from the beginning you geared towards becoming a professional musician. How old were you when you started? I was in second grade, oh. so not that young. Well, it's considered young, but Mozart started at Mozart. Four. <laughs> at what age? Uh, I think well, he when was he was composing born. When he was right, five, right, probably. right. Yes. I mean, it's it's young. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. At, at, on any world standard. No question. Yes. So, um, and at that time, it was still Soviet Union, so it was Russian training, and we had a lot of teachers who immigrated during the World War II from Moscow, St. Petersburg. So it was the different crowd actually was different atmosphere back then when I grew up there. Well, I mean, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds, it's, it sounds great. It sounds great. We're looking forward to seeing you. We're looking forward to seeing you also, Cantor Ness. You're going to be conducting the orchestra? I, I will be. Okay, uh, that's a good I, thing. I look at this concert as a, uh, you know, a, a, a wonderful welcome to the summer season. Wonderful welcome to the summer season. Well put. That's June the 11th, Beth L. Temple, 7 o'clock. Absolutely. Absolutely. 7 o'clock. Be there. <laughs>